What's up YouTube, my name is Will, and today we're here to talk about adjustability and how to set up your air ride shocks and struts. So this applies not only to trying to dial in that perfect ride comfort, but it also would apply to any other fine tunability with your shocks and struts, such as setting it up for a low ride height or setting it up for maximum handling. Personally, I like to ride low, and that means I set mine up to be stiff. Let me explain. Air suspension is a highly adjustable system and people jump and immediately think I'm talking about the bags themselves, but actually there's more to it than that. You have a threaded overall body length and you have adjustable dampers. So something you can do by following this video yourself is make these fine tuned adjustments to achieve a certain ride quality, or you could bring it to a shop you trust. You could bring your vehicle there and they could actually fine tune your suspension for you. And speaking of ride quality, that's really a subjective term. It's gonna depend on, say, the quality of the paved roads in your area. So not everyone is gonna have the same opinions as what it is to achieve perfect ride quality. This is just gonna be some baselines to get you started. So there are two different kind of suspension layouts that are common on cars that we're talking about. You've got cars that have a separate spring and shock in the rear, and you have a car with a true coil over rear. The cars that use a true coilover on all four corners, meaning that there is a shock or a strut, and the spring, the traditional coil spring, goes over that, making it a coil over, the cars that have four of those, one in each corner, will be the most adjustable in terms of ride quality. And that is because the overall height of the system is able to be adjusted up and down, which is not the case to the same extent when you talk about a separate spring and shock rear. So I wanna establish that upfront that these vehicles are the most adjustable and the most fine tunable. So here we have two of the same model of car and let's just say with two different owners and the different owners have entirely different goals for their setup. So this one we're gonna call the performance oriented setup and this one we're gonna call the comfort oriented setup because they want the most ride comfort. And what ride comfort really means is say you're driving on the highway on a bridge and going over a bridge connection and those wheels and those tires make contact and that pushes up onto the chassis of the car, onto the body of the car, and how much of that force is put into you as the passengers into the car is gonna really determine the comfort. So we're gonna really say, you have either more wheel deflection or less wheel deflection. So you get more wheel deflection with a softer air spring running less pressure, and that means it's more comfortable. You don't feel as much of that bump in the road inside the cabin of the car. And over here, the more stancy boy performance oriented setup, you're gonna get a lot less wheel deflection. For me, like I said earlier, I like to drive low. So the way a kit comes out of the box from say airlift or super low is probably gonna suit me well. I wanna have a stiff spring rate in the vehicle. So when I do hit a bump, my big wide wheels and stretch tires don't cram into my front fenders. And that's really important for a lot of you, but some of you wanna try to have the best of both worlds or maybe aren't into having such an aggressive fitment. And so for some of you using the prescribed setup right out of the box that's pre-threaded for you, won't make sense and you'll want to make an adjustment. Little side note about dialing in those pressures, which is that first step before you start making any threaded adjustments, is you're going to want to move in very small increments. I like to do it in about a one or two PSI increment across all four of my air springs. I'm lowering that vehicle down and the reason I don't make big jumps from say 45 PSI all the way down to 35 is because every little adjustment can make a big difference and you don't want to overshoot that target pressure you're looking for. So as you can see, our bag here is taller, it has more pressure in it, and our bag here is shorter, has less pressure. But both of these vehicles will be at the exact same height. So what height is lost here by running less pressure? We've actually made up that exact same amount down here on the lower mount. So these both have the same lower mount, but they're threaded to a different place. What you can do, which is something you can actually do yourself, is if you loosen up your lock collars, you'll be able to thread that lower mount down to make up for any height lost by running that lower air spring pressure. Determine what air spring pressure feels right to you and feels comfortable, and then from there, make your adjustment of your lower mount down so that you get the comfort that you want. That actually can be done very easily on a car equipped with airlift or with super low. In the case of airlift, they usually are gonna use some form of thread locker to lock the bag to the damper. In the case of super low, we actually use dual lock collars. So the upper lock collar will be there 
keeping the bag in place. If you were to go ahead and loosen up that lower lock collar, you could reach into your wheel well when your car is supported up on jack stands or on a lift. You could spin the whole assembly by spinning the bag and that lefty loosey righty tighty will make the assembly longer and shorter. So you're gonna dial in what pressure you want and then you're gonna lengthen your strut body or your shock body to be longer and that's gonna accomplish that height that you want. Now, all of this threading up and down will have some side effects. And if you're an air ride veteran, this will seem extremely obvious, but to some of the beginners and novices out there, I just wanna be crystal clear on the subject. So if you're making your overall body length longer, and then you go to add full air pressure to your bag, awesome, you've actually increased your maximum lift, and that's generally useful. But on the flip side, if you're increasing your maximum lift, you can probably imagine you're also decreasing the amount of drop you have. For some vehicles, you are actually having the chassis or some part of the vehicle hit the ground before you hit zero PSI. So in that case, you're really seeing some upside in terms of lift and you're not sacrificing in terms of drop. But again, the original premise of this video is about improving ride quality and so if that's your goal this is definitely something you're able to do. So let's say that you're this customer over here and you found that ideal pressure from there you made the body length longer so now you've got your pressure matched up with your height so you're really happy from a comfort perspective and you're happy with your ride height but you go to air your vehicle out and you find it's not going as low as it did out of the box and you're not happy with that, what you're gonna have to do is ultimately find a blend between these two settings. If you wanna return to the threaded length that it was right out of the box, for super low products, you will find that right in the literature included in the packaging. And for any other brand, just give Bag Riders a call. So we talked earlier about how a true four coilover vehicle is gonna have the most adjustment and we're really getting to, yes, the front is gonna work like this on any of these vehicles, but what about the rear? So in the rear, you've got your true coilover vehicles and you also have separate spring and shock vehicles. So in the air ride world, a separate spring and shock vehicle is gonna have that air spring with an upper and lower mount. And unfortunately, there is no way to adjust that assembly to be taller or shorter like we've just learned about. That's gonna be a preset design from whoever designed it. In the case of super low, we designed those kits to ride low to have minimal wheel deflection. So that means if you've been paying attention, we're talking about a stiffer setup in the case of all those super low separate spring and shock rears, which might be what you have on your car. Personally, I actually think the Superlow kit rides really, really well, but again, ride comfort is totally subjective. So we get a lot of questions about these setup changes, which is why we decided to make this video. And you might be imagining if you're making a big change to all of your air spring pressures, is there something that you could be doing with your damping knobs? Is there gonna need to be more or less damping force within your dampers? And the answer is yes, but rather than try to shoehorn all of that into this video, in the near future, we will do our very best to make a damping setting video. And we'll also get into, hey, if you are trying to get more comfort and you're trying to lower that air spring pressure, what do you do with your damping knobs in that case? So I will get into that in the future, I promise. Once we do make that, I will drop a link up here as well as in the description so you can find that other video. Today has been yet another Bag Riders informational video that we wanted to bring to you. If we missed anything, skipped over anything, got anything wrong, feel free to drop any questions, comments, concerns below. We do try our very best to get back to all of you. Again, my name is Will. I'll catch you on the next one.